What kind of challenges does Oklahoma present? You know, they're a gifted offensive group. Uh, Sherfield's playing really well, shooting it with a lot of confidence. Uh, certainly with uh, Groves at the five, they have a unique dynamic of a, a big man that can not only facilitate offense and shoot the three on the perimeter, but he's a really good passer. Um, so they've got a veteran group, guys like Jalen Hill and, um, you know, with Jacob Groves, who have also been there and been in their program and have pride. And, um, you know, they're a team that's – they're going to be hungry for a win. They're coming off a tough loss, uh, one-point loss at home. So uh, a group that, you know, they've got a lot of defensive intent and offensively they can really space the floor. It's the dynamic. I mean, they shoot the three really well but don't necessarily shoot a ton of them. I mean, how do you prepare for that? Yeah, it's really, you know, when you look at it, I mean, Sherfield's shooting a really high percentage and then Jacob Groves has shot the ball well, so they're making probably two-thirds of them at this point, and then Tanner Groves accounts for a fair amount of other ones. So, you know, for us, you know, our defensive system, uh, we believe in it and we trust our process, and so we don't spend a whole lot of time, um, you know, with – with worrying about our opponent, we kind of do what we do, and we adjust, you know, things here and there that we need to be better at or be intentional with going in against our opponent. But we're going to come out and try to pressure the ball, take charges, block out, and finish plays. You and all the guys after that Iowa game talked about not handling a road environment very well. What did, how do you put that knowledge to use here this week? Well, for us, it's it's coming out with, uh, you know, we've got to have a tremendous sense of urgency. We've got to have a chip on our shoulder. Anytime you go on the road, you have to understand that, you know, you can't uh, be impacted by the environment. You can't be impacted by any variables, and you really have to be together. And there was times uh, in that game a month ago that, you know, those things affected us. And, and hopefully we've moved past that where we can keep our focus on what's in front of us and understand it's the same game that we, you know, that we play here at Hilton and have the same habits every single day that we work on. What has Hassan brought for you guys this year? He's an energy guy that can come in and he can generate turnovers. He's been terrific uh, in presses, getting deflections on the ball um, and, and causing and generating turnovers. He's a guy that uh, can finish at the rim with tremendous uh, length and athleticism. Um, and he's somebody that, you know, he, he moves extremely well and runs well uh, at his size, uh, so that gives him a lot of versatility to make plays out there. What what can it do for you guys when you have a guy like him where you can bring in and put at the head of your zone or you put him at the top of your press that just can create <laughs> chaos, I suppose, make the game even more disjointed? Yeah, that's what he does. I mean, our defense is built on trying to disrupt the rhythm of the offense and, you know, certainly in presses and zones and traps and those sort of things. He has that innate ability and that instinct to do that. So we'll continue to count on him in that capacity, and, and he'll continue to uh, you know, embrace doing that at the level he has. You talked about Taman a lot after the Baylor game, but looking back, when you guys were down nine, I think he gets a steal to ignite it. He was instrumental, I think, to a lot of plays on that run. What does that say? about him in that moment when you, you guys were, you know, not in a great spot. No, no, we weren't. And he, he put his foot on the gas. He certainly made plays defensively, and he got to the rim and got us in the paint and made plays for us at the goal. Um, you know, he's a, a tremendous competitor. Uh, he cares, has that sense of pride, really wants our, our team to do well. And um, you could sense something in him at that point in the game where my team needs me right now and it's time to step up. And, um, you know, credit to him for, for, you know, for seeing it and being that intentional and then stepping up and doing it. With how difficult the Big 12 is, how quickly do you have to flip the switch from like celebrating a win over Baylor to moving on to the next one? Yeah, very quickly. I mean, for us, we, we talk every day about just doing the same things and focusing on our habits. And it's not outcome based whether we win or lose or it's a close loss or close win or, um, you know, a margin on either side. It's, it's more about our guys just coming and stacking up the habits and the days and knowing that if we continue to do that, things will, for the most part, go our way. But uh, as you mentioned, this league's really good um, and probably better than it's ever been. If you look at the numbers and where everybody's at, as we really kind of, you know, uh, lock in here on league play moving forward. So, um, you know, there's going to be nights that you've got to be really good at playing well and coming away with a loss and then bouncing back and, and getting right back to work and not having an affect you. So we, we believe in our, our way that we build our guys mentally and the work that they do every single day and, and how connected they are and unified they are. And um, so we build our process in such a way to be able to, to bounce back when you have adversity and challenges to get right back to work. In terms of embracing that mindset, is this group where you want them to be? Are they exceeding that work to do? 
Well, certainly, you know, the, the first test that we've had uh, since Christmas, they've, they've answered the, the call. And uh, it's hard to say because, you, you know, you don't know what until you get into the league and it's game after game. You know, now we hit a stretch here. We play Wednesday, we play Saturday, we play Tuesday, and they keep coming at you. And there's nowhere you can look on the schedule and say, okay, that's one that we can count on or that's one that won't be that hard because – every single night it doesn't matter if whoever you think is at the bottom of the league goes to the team at the top of the league they have a you know they have a chance to win and, and a good chance to win so uh, we just got to control what we can we've got to be focused on the work that we do every single day we've got to be a team that's really together and connected and we've got to have, handle adversity well because we know every team in this league is going to have adversity and and, and probably in multiple cases throughout the course of league play. So just handling it well and moving on is important. Is consistency the antidote to that? Yeah, and I think, you yeah, and I think with consistency, you know, there, you look at the numbers across the league and you got to be able to win games when you don't shoot it well. You know, I think for consistency, nobody – there's not going to be a team in the Big 12 that every night out shoots – makes 10, 12 threes and shoots 40 percent because defensively uh, and physically and, and the coaching is so good that – you know, you're going to have to find ways to, to win a game on the road or by one point or when you don't make very many shots. So um, I think to me the consistency is, is is having the effort and the energy and the attitude and the spirit because those are the things you really can control. And then if you can have that spirit, you know, every single night it gives you the best chance to play your best and, and hopefully you can have more of a consistent theme to the way you play. Talking about Tayman, when – he got on campus. Did you expect him to have this big of an impact this fast? You know, he certainly continued to answer every challenge. You know, you you, you know when you recruit guys that have great character, um, with work habits, and come from a great family, and really love Iowa State, that that's that's the equation to be successful. But to be able to say we could see that he would play this well uh, in the magnitude of some of the games that he has, um, you know, nobody could predict that. And um, but, you know, he's, he's got such a humble confidence. Um, he's a guy that's – he's got so much gratitude and, and pride in how he does it every day, and he cares about his teammates to the extent that he does. It's not surprising when you're around him every single day. And it's just – you know, he's one of those guys it's, – uh, it's an honor to be his coach for sure. When we just talked to him and he was talking <clears> about how cool it was growing up, getting autographs from Monte Morris, he was, I believe, your first commit other than Tyrese Hunter – how easy was it, I guess, to sell him on this program? Well, you know, he, he loves Iowa State and certainly, like you said, those type of memories that have impacted him. And, you know, for us, as, as we do this, we want all the guys in our program to, to treat the young people and those folks in the community a certain way, not only because that's the right thing to do, but also because it, it builds that rallying uh, effect around our program and, and makes people care more. And then you look at the impact, the actions of somebody who's, you know, a great player and a great person like Monte, um, you know, his acts, what, what it impacted on Taman, And now Taman's carrying that torch, you know, forward with, with the sense of pride he is. So it's, it's really cool to work at a place where you, you have that. And, and that's something that's really special about Iowa State.